फ्रेंड्स इन टूडेज लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ माइनॉरिटी शेयर होल्डर्स राइट्स द ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट दिस लेक्चर इंटेंड्स टू अचीव आर टू हेल्प द स्टूडेंट्स टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ अ शेयर होल्डर एंड अ माइनॉरिटी शेयर होल्डर डेवलप एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग अबाउट द नीड फॉर द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ माइनॉरिटी राइट्स अंडरस्टैंड द रूल ऑफ मेजोरिटी laid down in the case of force versus harbottel develop an understanding about how the rule of majority is applied within the indian scenario develop an understanding about the exceptions to the rule of majority which constitute the various rights guaranteed to the minority shareholders learn various provisions under the companies act 2013 that guarantee certain rights to minority shareholders firstly Let's understand what a shareholder is. A shareholder is an individual, a corporation or institution that owns at least one share of corporate stock and is also known as stockholder. As shareholders are the owners of a company, they also enjoy the profits earned by the company's success. The Companies Act 2013 does not specifically define shareholders. However, The word member has been defined under section 2 clause 55 of the Companies Act 2013 which includes the subscriber to the memorandum of company every other person who agrees in writing to become a member of the company every person holding shares of the company now who is a minority shareholder a minority shareholder refers to a shareholder who owns less than 50% of a company's total shares minority shareholder has not been defined in the companies act 2013 but legal provisions like section 235 and section 244 of the companies act 2013 provides the meaning for the minority shareholder under section 235 which deals with power to acquire shares of the dissenting shareholders and under section 244 which deals with right to apply for the operation and management the minority shareholders are given 10% of shares or minimum 100 shareholders whatsoever is less in case of companies with a share capital and one third of the total number of members in case of companies without the share capital talking about the need for the protection of minority shareholders rights in the corporate world all democratic decisions and management of a company are made with the majority rule the majority shareholders in the company have the absolute right and power in the operations and working of a company all the decisions whether it be finance or management are made on the basis of majority but sometimes the opinions of minority shareholders are not taken into account their rights and interests are often ignored as they do not hold a lot of power in handling the management of the company the majority shareholders use their authority and powers to take over the interest and rights of the minority shareholders that causes mismanagement and prejudice in the company although the erstwhile Companies Act 1956 contained provisions for the protection of the interests of the minority shareholders the minority shareholders found themselves incapable of exercising their rights due to lack of the resource or of time to overcome this problem faced by the minority there has been a notable attempt by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs to protect the interests of the minority shareholders by including comprehensive provisions in the companies act of 2013 as compared to the erstwhile companies act of 1956 the companies act 2013 is more comprehensive and well thought out for the benefit of minority shareholders and strives to promote caution and transparency in the overall functioning of a company the corporate world aims to maintain a balance between the effective and efficient control of a company by protecting the interests of the minority shareholders a company is successful only when all the members of the company are working towards the same goal 
by respecting each other's opinions and working techniques. In the words of Palmer, a proper balance of rights of majority and minority shareholders is essential for the smooth functioning of the company. A large number of provisions are provided under the modern day company laws for the protection of the interests of investors and companies. The aim of these provisions is to require those who control the affairs of a company to exercise their powers according to certain principles of natural justice and fair play. Talking about the rule in the case of Foss versus Harbottle. In this case, two shareholders, Richard Foss and Edward Turton, commenced legal action against the directors, charging them with concerting and effecting various fraudulent and illegal transactions, whereby the property of the company was misapplied and wasted. They prayed before the court that the defendants might be decreed to make good to the company the losses. The court rejected the claim and held that the conduct with which the defendants are charged is an injury not to the plaintiffs exclusively, it's an injury to the whole corporation. The court further held that in such cases, the rule is that the corporation should sue in its own name and in its corporate character. In law, the corporation and the aggregate of members of the corporation are not the same thing for purposes like this. The rule was restated in the case of Edwards versus Halliwell, just as Jenkins observed. First, the proper plaintiff in respect of a wrong alleged to be done to a company is prima facie the company itself. Secondly, where the alleged wrong is a transaction which might be made binding on the company by a simple majority of members, no individual member of the company is allowed to maintain an action in respect of that matter for a simple reason that, if a mere majority of members of the company is in favour of what has been done, then it cannot be questioned. Talking about rule of majority in Indian scenario, an illustration of the working of the rule in Foss versus Harbottle is to be found in V. N. Bhajekar versus K. M. Shinkar. In this case, the directors of a company resolve to appoint a company as it is managing agents. Few shareholders were not in favour of this decision, but despite this, the directors confirmed the appointment. The shareholders filed the petition in the court where the court held that the few minority shareholders are not entitled to file a suit in the court, asking the court to intervene in the matters like who should be the managing agent of the company. In Raja Mundri Electric Supply Corporation versus A. Nageshwar Rao case, the Supreme Court observed that the conduct with which the defendant is charged is an injury not to the plaintiffs exclusively, it's an injury to the whole corporation. In such cases, the rule is that the corporation should sue in its own name and its corporate character. It's not a matter of course for an individual members of a corporation thus to assume themselves the right of suing in the name of the corporation. In law, the corporation and the aggregate of members of the corporation are not the same. A deviation from the rule of Fass versus Horbottle can be seen in a decision given by the Delhi High Court in ICICI versus Paris Rampuria Synthetic Limited, Appeal Number 2332 of 1997 case, wherein the court has held that a mechanical and automatic application of Force versus Harbottle rule to the Indian situations, Indian conditions, and Indian corporate realities would be improper and is misleading. The principle in the countries of its origin owes its genesis to the established factual foundation of shareholder power and majority shareholder power centred around private individual enterprise and involving a large number of small shareholders is vastly different from the ground realities. Talking about exceptions to the rule of majority. The majority role that was endorsed in Foss versus Harbottle case does not prevail in all situations. It extends to cases in which the corporations are competent to ratify managerial misdeeds. There are certain acts and incidents which no majority of shareholders can approve or affirm. In such cases, each and every shareholder may sue to enforce obligations owed to the company. In American literature, 
a representative action of this kind is called the derivative action. Here the relief goes to the company. The exceptions to the rule of majority are firstly acts ultra vires. The rule in Foss versus Harbottle applies only as long as the company is acting within its powers. Ultra vires acts are those acts which fall outside the powers expressly referred to in the Companies Act and even outside those referred to in Articles of Association and Memorandum of Association. A shareholder is entitled to bring an action against the company and its officers in respect of matters which are ultra vires and no majority of shareholders can sanction it. In Bharat Insurance Company Limited versus Kanhaiya Lal, the plaintiff was a shareholder of the respondent company. One of the objects of the company was to advance money at interest on the security of land, houses, machinery and other property situated in India. The plaintiff complained that several investments have been made by the company without adequate security and contrary to the provisions of the memorandum and therefore prayed for a perpetual injunction to restrain it from making such investments. The court observed that the broad rule in such cases is no doubt in all matters of internal management of a company. The company itself is the best judge of its affairs and the court should not interfere. But the application of the assets of a company is not a matter of mere internal management. The court held that the directors were acting ultra vires in their application of the funds of the company. Under these circumstances, a single member can maintain a suit for a declaration as to the true construction of the article in question. In such instances, good faith is an important ingredient in determining maintainability. If the plaintiff's action is tainted or there is an inordinate delay, his claim will not be accepted. The second exception is fraud on minority. When a majority of members of a company use their power to defraud or oppress the minority, the conduct is liable to be impeached even by a single shareholder. The fraud or oppression must involve an unconscionable use of majority's power resulting or likely to result either in financial loss or in unfair or discriminatory treatment of the minority. In Green Health versus Ardenne Cinemas Limited case, it was held that a special resolution would be liable to be impeached if the effect of it was to discriminate between majority shareholders and minority shareholders so as to give to the majority shareholders an advantage of which the minority shareholders are deprived of. Another exception is acts requiring special majority. There are certain acts which can only be done by passing a special resolution at the general meeting of shareholders. Accordingly, if the majority purport to do any such act by passing only an ordinary resolution or without passing special resolution in the manner required by law, any member or members can bring an action to restrain the majority. In Nagapa Chetair versus Madras Rail Club case, the court held that if the majority purport to do any such act by passing only an ordinary resolution or without passing a special resolution in the manner required by law, any member or members can bring an action to restrain the majority. Wrongdoers in control. Sometimes an obvious wrong may have been done to the company, but the controlling shareholders would not permit an action to be brought against the wrongdoer. In such cases, to safeguard the interest of the company, any member or members may bring an action in the name of the company. In Glass versus Atkin case, a company was controlled equally by two defendants and two plaintiffs. An action arose alleging that the two defendants had fraudulently converted the company's assets to their own use. Allowing the action, the court said, while the general principle was for the company itself to bring an action where it had an interest, it was appropriate for the two plaintiffs here to bring an action on behalf of the company since the two defendants controlled the company in the sense that they could prevent the company from taking action. 
This exception to Foss versus Harbottle rule applies whenever the defendants are shown to be able by means of any manipulation of their position in the company to ensure that the action is not brought by the company. Individual membership rights. Every shareholder has vested in him certain personal rights against the company and his co-shareholders. A large number of such rights have been conferred upon shareholders by the act itself. They may also arise out of articles of association. Such individual rights are known as individual membership rights and while respecting them, the rule of majority simply does not operate. In Nagapa Chetiar versus Madras Rail Club case, the court observed that the shareholder is entitled to enforce his individual rights against the company, such as his right to vote, the right to have his vote recorded, or his right to stand as a director of a company at an election. Every shareholder can assert such a right in his own name. Talking about oppression and mismanagement. In addition to the protection afforded to the minority by the exceptions to the rule of supremacy of majority, the Companies Act 2013 contains special provisions for prevention of oppression and mismanagement. Chapter 16 of the Companies Act 2013 contains provisions to safeguard the interest of investors in companies and also to protect public interest. The rights conferred on shareholders by this chapter are also known as qualified minority rights. According to Section 397 Clause 1 of Companies Act 1956, the term oppression has been defined as when affairs of the company are being conducted in a manner prejudicial to the public interest or in a manner oppressive to any member or members. The definition of mismanagement has been defined under Section 398 Clause 1 as conducting the affairs of the company in a manner prejudicial to public interest or in a manner prejudicial to the interests of the company or there has been a material change in the management and control of the company and by reason of such change, it's likely that the affairs of the company will be conducted in a manner prejudicial to public interest or interest of the company. Sections 241 to section 246 of the Act provide relief from oppression and mismanagement, where the relief can be sought from the tribunal in case of oppression and mismanagement through section 244, clause 1. In Kanika Mukherjee versus Rameshwar Dayal Dupe case, the Calcutta High Court held that the principle embodied in Companies Act, which provide for prevention of oppression and mismanagement, is an exception to the rule in Foss versus Harbottle, which lays down the sanctity of the majority rule. The first remedy in the hands of an oppressed minority is to move the tribunal. Whenever the affairs of a company are being conducted in a manner oppressive to any member or members or prejudicial to public interest, an application can be made to the company law tribunal under section 241. The requisite number of members who must sign the application is given in section 244. Where the company is with a share capital, the application must be signed by at least 100 members of the company or by one tenth of the total number of its members, whichever is less or by any member or members holding one-tenth of the issued share capital of the company. If the company is without share capital, the application has to be signed by one-fifth of the total number of its members. Joint holders are considered as one member as provided under explanation to section 244 clause 1. Further, the proviso to section 244 clause 1 provides that the tribunal may on application allow any number of member or members to sue if in its opinion circumstances exist which make it just and equitable to do so. The grounds on which an application can be made under section 241 are firstly that the affairs of the company are being conducted in a manner prejudicial or oppressive to a member or some members or in a manner which is prejudicial to the public interest or in a manner prejudicial to the interests of the company. Secondly, a material change has taken place in the management or control of the company, whether by an alteration in the board of directors or manager 
or in the ownership of the company's shares or its membership or in any other manner whatsoever and that by reason of such change it is likely that the affairs of the company will be conducted in a manner prejudicial to its interests or its members or any class of members. Section 241 clause 1 sub clause b provides for relief in cases of mismanagement. For a petition under this section to succeed, it must be established that the affairs of the company are being conducted in a manner prejudicial to the interest of the company or public interest or that by reason of any change in the management or control of the company, it's likely that the affairs of the company will be conducted in that manner. If the tribunal is so convinced, it may, with a view to bringing to an end or preventing the matter complained of or apprehended, make such order as it thinks fit. In Rajamurthy Electric Supply Corporation Limited versus A. Nageshwara Rao case, a petition was brought against a company by certain shareholders on the ground of mismanagement by directors. The court found that the vice chairman grossly mismanaged the affairs of the company and had drawn considerable amounts for his personal purposes, that large amounts were owing to the government for charges for supply of electricity, that machinery was in a state of despair, the directorate had become greatly attenuated and that the shareholders outside the group of the chairman were powerless to set matters right. This was held to be sufficient evidence of mismanagement. The court accordingly appointed two administrators for the management of the company for a period of six months, vesting in them all the powers of the directorate. The Companies Act 2013 also offers minority shareholders the right to file a collective class action lawsuit, which is called a class action suit. A class action suit is a lawsuit wherein the company law tribunal is approached by a group of shareholders having a common interest and reason against the company, its directors, the board or the management. Both the shareholders and the lenders of the company are permitted to file a suit. In addition to these rights, the Companies Act 2013 also confers upon the shareholders some additional rights which are right to appoint small shareholder directors. Under Section 151 of the Companies Act 2013, the small shareholders, also known as minority shareholders, have the right to appoint a person on board of their listed company as their small shareholder director. The person shall be classified as an independent director and serve a term of three years if appointed. Once the term of three years is over, the director can neither be reappointed for a further period nor can he be allowed to be linked to with the company for the next three years. Talking about right of reconstruction and amalgamation of companies. Due to rising concerns and pleas of the minority shareholders being neglected at the times of mergers, acquisitions, amalgamations or reconstructions to the company, the Companies Act 2013 safeguards minority rights under Section 235 and Section 236. Section 235 provides for the power to acquire shares of shareholders dissenting from scheme or contract approved by the majority. Section 236 Clause 1 and Clause 2 provide that the acquirer after becoming the holder of 90% or more of issued equity share capital shall offer the minority shareholder for buying equity shares at the determined value. Section 236 Clause 3 provides that the minority shareholders are eligible for making an offer to the majority shareholders to buy their shares, known as squeezing out. Section 236 Clause 5 provides that the transferer company acts as a transfer agent for making payments to minority shareholders. Now comes right to adoption of a fair valuation mechanism. In order to evaluate the value of a company's shares, the company should adopt an independent valuation mechanism to safeguard minority interests. In order to ensure that the shareholders are entitled to approach the company law tribunal, if the process appears unfair, the audit committee appoints the independent value and the committee shall take the necessary measures. Talking about e-voting process, under section 108 
Companies Act 2013, it's mandatory for certain companies to offer e-voting facilities to the shareholders to vote on shareholders meeting. This provision has permitted the minority shareholders who are staying in the country or are outside to exercise their voting rights without having to cast a vote in person. This has caused the participation of minority shareholders in meetings to rise and enable them to express their opinion on major business issues. Talking about majority of the minority, Section 188 of the Companies Act provides that the related parties require firms to enter into such transactions only after the majority of the non-interested parties have approved them. The minority shareholders are obviously the non-interested parties because promoters or majority shareholders are usually the stakeholders. Therefore, these transactions are approved by minority shareholders. Thus, we see that the Companies Act 2013 through its various provisions aims to preserve and shield minority shareholders from being abused at the hands of majority shareholders. The legislation through its various provisions intend to safeguard the interests of the minority shareholders, but it requires the proper implementation of these provisions, safeguarding and to give due consideration to their valuable rights. It may also be concluded that the minority shareholders back in Companies Act 1956 were not considered as a major part of the company due to suppression of the majority rules and regulation in the company. But Companies Act 2013 has taken various crucial steps to safeguard the interests of the minority rights of the shareholders in the company irrespective of the existence of oppression and mismanagement of the company affecting the rights of the minority shareholders. Therefore, this dual approach towards the enforcement of the minority rights guarantees proper administration of the corporate activities successfully only when it is implemented properly by giving importance and rights to the minority shareholders in the management of the company. That was all for today's lecture. Thank you for watching.